water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. I read these words as a young boy in the late 40s in my school and I was seized by the desperation of the ancient mariner. Little did I realize at that point that two-thirds of a century later and in my own lifetime, the entire life forms on our beautiful planet will have the same plight. But this is what we have. If there was an alien coming from the outer space and see the earth, they'll say it's abundant water. There's a one thing which is an abundance on water. We have 70% of the earth's surface as oceans. We have huge depository of water all over the planet. But only 2.5% is what is fresh water. And out of that, only 1% is available for consumption by all life forms on the planet. So very tiny. We are very blessed with the Himalayas, where you see every year the snow comes in the winter or all through the year, snow melts and the rivers are born. They travel across the whole continent, giving life to all parts of the country. In India, for centuries, we have worshipped the rivers, we worshipped the lakes and the sarovars. There were wells in the villages and these were sources of drinking water throughout the year. What went wrong? Almost 50 years ago, the industrial revolution came to India, bringing along with chemicals and plastics and changed our way of life forever. What we have preserved for 5,000 years got destroyed in only 50 years of lifetime really unfortunate. Today you see the Everest, we think of it as Mount Kailash, the abode of Shiva. We say that Shiva lives there on the top of the Kailash. What do we see on the Mount Kailash today? It's covered with plastic, with human waste, with all sorts of bottles and leftover cans. They're being cleaned. I study in Banaras, the river Ganga we call Ganga Ma, is today become a stinking canal. We were horrified when we went for a 50-year class reunion to see the state of Ganga. Does it mean everything is lost? You must remember we are water creatures. Human beings, 60% of my body is water. 80% of my bloodstream is water that keeps me going. So if there was no water, I will not be able to survive more than one week. The body will start shutting off. So we have to have water. If you see the 20th century, the population became three times. But what was the water consumption? Six times. Will we never learn? Is this what we are going to leave behind for our future generations? Are we going to have to proceed to the Mahapralaya as we talk of the Kaliyuk? Answer is no. It is all not yet lost. We still have amongst us knowledge experience and wisdom, how to conserve. And that's what my talk is about, how to conserve water. What are we doing today about it? Fortunately for us, a lot is happening in that direction. We, want, we now have a government in the center, first time from the independence, we have now created a special ministry to save Ganga. We are working on preserving Ganga, work has started. The amazing quality of rivers is, in the flowing rivers is, if you leave them alone, if you don't pollute any further, they revitalize themselves. So I'm sure my young friends, in your lifetime, you'll see Ganga as I saw as a young boy in the 1950s, as what we call Ganga Ma. We also have these sarovars and the lakes across the whole country. We just heard about Nizamuddin. You may not know Delhi was known for its city of lakes. We had hundreds of lakes in and around Delhi when the Mughals came. Many of them are gone. So what have we done? We have built these beautiful complexes on where there used to be a river because of the prime location. Whatever rivers are left, we have destroyed them, polluted them heavily. But the good thing is, we have many young people like you who have taken on themselves to restore those lakes, restore those sarovars. It's very simple. You just need to re-energize the bacteria 
which is in the mosque and the hyacinth is worldwide known how to then co coagulate all these heavy particles, sink them down, get the pristine water again. It is happening. Bangalore, Mysore are already doing it. As the young people like you who are contributing, revitalizing these sarovars and lakes in Bangalore and Mysore. Well, the amazing thing about our country is the monsoon. We are in the thick of monsoon today. If you are to see the entire water which comes through the air on our land mass, we get enough water for all my needs throughout the year. If every drop was preserved, we'll have no deficiency. We'll have no problem in the future. But we don't. Chennai did. One young commissioner 10 years ago, lady commissioner, she said, I'll mandate rainwater harvesting in Chennai. What used to be a water deficient metropolis is today a water abundant city. We are talking to municipalities, practically all of them are charged up with the idea we must conserve water, we must provide rainwater harvesting. Very easy to do. Delhi is already taking steps in that direction. What we have not learned very easily and what my rishis and the munis of the old times used to do, what do we do with our sewage? In the morning ablution. They used to use root zone treatment plant. During the day, you'll hear from Karan, my very dear friend, who created this movement of what I'll be talking about during the day, green building movement. Karan and we worked together on this first building and created a root zone treatment today's world in a more scientific manner to ensure no energy is consumed, all the sewage, fillage, whatever comes out is cleaned and we get a beautiful lake outside storing rainwater and the sewage water going in. So knowledge is with us, the questions of implementing. What we did, we wrote the National Building Chapter, National Building Code of India, and a colleague of mine, Sandeep Goel, is here. We have been very passionate in writing National Building Code of India. We wrote an addendum number one, which is approach to sustainability. In that, we recommended every public building, every residential complex must have a sewage treatment plant. They localize sewage treatment plant. Don't take your sewage away, recycle it right there, treat it and recycle there. Give the fresh water back to toilets, to, to your horticulture, and if you have an air conditioning makeup requirement, use the treated water. Highly successful. What we did beyond was, we followed the example of Singapore. I'm sure many of you know about Singapore is water starved. They import the water, but not a drop is allowed to go anywhere. 100% of city's sewage and waste is recycled back into drinking water, what they call knee water. Bangalore has already started following the tradition. I understand 25% of the city of Bangalore sewage goes back, not for drinking. We will not start drinking yet. Being Indians, we are very concerned about it, but we use for domestic usage. Beyond that, what we have done is we have created this treatment of wastewater and laying parallel lines. Bombay has done for many, many decades that you put dual line, dual pipeline, one for fresh water, one for treated water. We are working on many cities. In the IGBC that I belong to, we have 40 cities coming up in the country, becoming green cities. We wrote to the Prime Minister, 100 smart cities should become 100 green smart cities. All of them will have this, that not a drop of water will be wasted. Every drop will be treated and recycled back into a separate main running through the, through the city, through the area to provide treated water for horticulture, for toilets, and for air conditioning makeup. As I mentioned to you in the National Building Code, we write down what are the rules for the nation. The last revision was in 2005. After Modi sahab took over, he said, I must revise, I'm glad we are going to have NBC 2015. In 2005, we said municipalities will supply you 135 liter per capita per day. This is almost one fourth of what developed country provide 100 to 150 gallons per capita per day. We are working and Sandeep, my, fellow, my colleague is involved in rewriting. What we are saying, cut down from 135, bring it to 90. In IGBC, we are saying bring it to 45 liter per capita per day. It meets all your needs. The question is, how do we adopt it? And I'd like to share with you what we have done. 
to our societies. We try to create that don't use the plastic bottles. You know what you pay for the city for municipal supply? You pay 20 rupees. The most expensive is 20 rupees for 1,000 liter. What do you use in the bottled water? 30,000 rupees for the same 1,000 liter. Does it make sense for a poor country like mine? Instead of 20 rupees, you are paying 30,000 rupees because water is coming in a bottle. The tragedy is, what about with this plastic bottle? I am very glad my young students followed my request, didn't give you plastic bottles. Because remember in 2004, we discovered there were 2 billion plastic bottles in the world. We are in 2015. There must be 10 times more, maybe 20 times more bottles. What happens to them after we finish using? Some of them get recycled, but half of them end up on our beaches, in our rivers, in our water bodies, destroying, destroying life, leaching chemicals into the ground, destroying my underground water reserves. So we are saying, don't do that. What we have done in the IPA, IAPMO and all, we have said, we will cut down the use of fresh water through our plumbing fixtures. So we now have, when I came back to India in 1970, we used to have 20 liter of water for flush. I'm sure many of you have seen those overhead tanks. Janjir, you pull, 20 liter comes down. Today, the same job is done in 4 liter or in 2 liter. We have, we have to call it dual flush. It's part of life all over the country. We say 2 liter or 4 liter. We used to use rain shower, 100 liter for a shower bath. I take the same bath today with 5 liter of water. Because shower heads are provided with a little nozzle which aspirates the air to come in. So bath you are taking not with water alone, with water and air which comes out of it. The urinals, we used to have 4 liter of water to flush out urine, which is actually water. We now have waterless urinals. For male population, don't need to flush water. Use water for flushing. Use waterless urinal. That's what Karan gave. In the first building we did, waterless urinal. So they have vocabulary in India. What we are saying is, if you were to conserve all that, we can still preserve the way we are today. What is gone is gone. We'll try and restore some, but much of it will not come back. A million species which are gone, they're gone for good. But new species will come. So I belong to Indian Green Building Council. Many of you do. And what we are trying to do in the Indian, Indian Green Building Council is as follows. Keep in mind, buildings consume 30% of all water that the nation consumes. 30% goes in the building. In a green building, I consume one third of that. That means that 30% gets down to 10% because my, my measure is 45 liter per capita per day, not 135. And I say every drop of water you use will be recycled. So I get no waste connection. I get no stormwater connection. It's your problem. Deal with it locally. I'm glad to share with you when Karan started the movement in India in 2001, we had 20,000 square feet. My friends, India's story is amazing. Today as I speak to you, we stand at not at 1 billion, not at 2 billion, but 3 billion square feet of green building, 300 crore square feet from the 20,000 square feet. So what we are telling Modi sahab, give us an incentive. Don't give me money, charge me less. If I am green, if I am conserving, I am helping the nation, charge me less. If that happens, and I am sure it will happen very soon, we have committed to him, the Prime Minister of India will unfurl the Tiranga on the 15th August 2022, 75 years of independence with us being the world number one with 10 billion square feet of green building. India will go back to India. I was born, we were made only green. Remember, some of you were there 35 years ago, we woke up one morning to a beautiful slogan, Ham do, Hamare do. We had this spiraling population going ahead. The slogan came, Ham do, Hamare do. Beautiful slogan, very easy. And it put a dent in my spiraling population growth. Last year, you were all here. We had Apki Bar, Modi Sarkar. Look, after 30 years of coalition government, we now have a government with majority in the parliament, 
by the simple slogan ab ki baar modi sarkar my humble request is igbc war cries jal bachao kal bachao remember if you do that tomorrow will be ours the monsoon clouds of the monsoon will still bring rain in the monsoon in india we have large monsoon weather throughout the country it will replenish all my rivers all my lakes more important it quench the thirst of the parched earth and sprout the seed which is lying in the bosom of the earth to give you the fruits that you eat the autumn moonlight will kiss the flowers kiss the forest leaves and leave behind in the parting tears dew drops they'll glisten in the morning light drop back and nourish the earth the winter snows will cover my himalayas the snow will melt give new leaves of life to all the rivers and rivulets which start from the himalayas these are my eternal companions this is india's heritage india's dharohar we'll go back to what is what we call elixir of life which will sustain the life of future generations to come generations not yet born and they'll hold you and me in reverence that we made the change we forgot the path of comfort and any cost we started treading on the path of green remember bounties of nature will be there forever and ever thank you